Yeah, hello. Uh, so what is an event camera? An event camera is a new camera paradigm which only ch uh, detects changes in intensity in the image region instead of giving us an image like a normal camera does. However, in this video where we, where we see the visualization of the event camera, this is actually not what the event camera gives us. What the event camera actually gives us is a continuous signal of discrete events. Each event indicates a change of intensity. So positive events indicate a brighter change, and negative events indicate a darker change. However, when there is no change happening, then the event camera stays silent, so the pixel stays silent. And this is true for every pixel in the event camera. Such a design is inspired by neurons in biological retinas, such as ours, and it offers a number of advantages. For example, high dynamic range, so this camera does not suffer from overexposure like a normal camera. Also, it can deal way better with fast motions and does not suffer from a motion blur because this camera also does not have the, uh, the concept of exposure time. So, and, uh, and uh, furthermore, the events are measured within a millionth of a second, so it's quite fast. So, these advantages have been highlighted in previous work, for instance, by the work of Elias Mugler, who mounted an event camera on a crotocopter in order to track a marker on a wall to, uh, to, <clears throat> to uh, do high-speed post est estimates while the quadrocopter is performing those motions. However, this work is quite limited since it needs a, a known target in the environment uh, because uh, tracking any kind of object in an event stream is not that trivial. So to overcome that limitation, other works have been focusing on analyzing the event stream directly. For example, Han Mei Kim uh, could reconstruct with the event stream a panoramic image. But this as well is quite limited, because it uh, only allows to reconstruct a static scene where nothing is moves and the camera could only rotate. However, this work inspired us to ask actually the question, how much information is in, in the event stream? And if you can perform such an analysis without any of that such restriction, with any kind of camera motion as well as moving objects inside, and when we started our work, we were not very sure if that's even possible. But if, the, if it's possible, then we have like a system which could translate any event stream into an uh, image format, which our computer vision algorithms are much more comfortable to work with and make the advantages of, the, of this camera accessible. And here, for, to the best of our knowledge, we present the first method which is capable of doing so which takes only the raw event data and without uh, any major uh, limitation can reconstruct an intensity image and gives an estimate of the motion in form of an optical flow field where we here color-coded the motion direction of each pixel uh, in the image to the right. So this is very exciting for us because it shows that the event camera contains enough image information to be able to apply to higher computer vision tasks. But before I go into more details of our algorithm, let me give you an intuition why interpreting motion within the event camera is not that trivial. For this, we look at an example of a moving object with and without background. And, uh, um, <clears throat> and if we look at the first, it's quite easy since the only active regions are coming from the object itself. However, if we add a background to that, then the same task becomes much harder since but if you can analyze the image by reconstructing it's the core idea of our contribution here to combine to gain a more robust understanding of the motion inside the image as well in reconstruction algorithm which is beyond the capabilities of other methods thus far so to combine optical flow with the reconstruction, we use variation in a bounded domain. And if you look at the event stream diagram here, we see that the time domain is quite unbounded. A sliding window approach where we discretize the input. We then fill up the sliding window with the incoming event where each cell of, uh, of the sliding window will... Uh, so when the sliding window is uh, fed up, we then 
question of time, providing enough overlap to proper repeat that process over and over until we are done. Now that we defined our uh, domain, let's talk about the estimation we do inside the sliding window. Like I said, we use variational, uh, variational cost function for the estimation. Since variational methods are quite successful in optical flow additional cameras. So researchers in that the smoothness terms and the optical flow term. Smoothness of, of, of optical flow field U a problem for the optical flow estimate and smoothness of our intensity reconstruction which is a natural derivative from image statistics. And we also employ the optical flow term to enforce photometric consistency over time in our solution. However, the next two terms require a more detailed description, uh, which are the no event term and the event term, which integrate the event data into our solution. So the event term describes when an event is fired. So a new event E2 is fired when the intensities L exceed a certain threshold theta. And theta is always set relative to the last fired event, E1. So when theta is exceeded, a positive event is fired. And when it goes below minus theta, a negative event is fired. And the event term enforces that difference. That alone, however, is not enough, since the event, uh, since the event camera allows any kind of oscillation of the intensities in between, as long as the intensities stay in bound of theta and minus theta. So to enforce that behavior, we also combine the event term with the no event term, which is essentially a penalizing term, which adds a cost whenever the difference between two events uh, goes beyond that bound. So with all these terms together and with the sliding window, we have now the machinery to, which gives us an estimate of the intensity just given from the event data, gives a complementary optical flow field and constraints of the system with the incoming event data. So, to highlight the performance of the proposed method here, we prepared a series of video examples. Um, but first, uh, to highlight the performance of our algorithm, let me give you, well, let's see if that works. So, let me give you an uh, example of the system, how it runs in real time. So, here you can see that the system is capable of uh, simultaneously uh, reconstructing the intensities and gives an optical flow estimate of the environment. And this is where it can be run in real time, thanks to a primal dual minimization which we perform on the GPU of that laptop. So, the next example, we compare uh, our uh, reconstruction results with a standard camera to highlight the high dynamic range capabilities of our method. So, as you can see, the standard camera uh, has quite trouble to adjust its outer gain as we point the camera, both cameras into the interior and exterior of a room. However, the reconstruction results, is still, can, we can still see details from the inside and the outside. Um, here I want to point out the low resolution of the event camera, which is 128 squared, since this is still a very like prototype model. So a lot of the details are unfortunately lost. So, the next example we show the capabilities of understanding rapid motion with the event camera. Here we throw a ball onto a desk, and with this 30 hertz standard camera, you see a very jittery motion of the ball, while in our reconstruction results, we see a very smooth trajectory and uh, see even like the spinning motion of the ball. This is thanks that our approach essentially allows us to choose a frame rate afterwards, which is at this case 200 frames per second. So, and also thanks to the variational nature of our method, uh, we, uh, um, it allows us also to reconstruct a super resolution image with uh, only giving this uh, signals of the camera. So, to conclude my talk, we present here a new camera paradigm which can overcome the limitation of tra traditional cameras without flooding the system with redundant data like a high speed camera would do. And it has potential benefits to large areas of robotics if, that, uh, if the event data can be translated to an interpretable format. And we present here an, uh, the first algorithm which in a very general setting can do so. And we see it also as a first proof of concept that the event camera is capable of performing higher order computer vision tasks 
like uh, reconstruction, tracking, and so forth. And we hope our method is like uh, make, will make uh, the the event camera accessible and its advantages to a much wider computer vision community, uh, to, on, which will hopefully lead to new research results and exciting new uh, results to present. So, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>